With that, we have this talk. It's by Aryan von Hattem. It's called Carrier Grade, Grade Copyright. Give him a hand. Thank you very much. The title of this presentation is uh, Carrier Grade uh, Copyright, mostly because it's a good alliteration and uh, I want to draw a crowd but also because uh, I'm actually going to be speaking a little bit about the uh, copy copyright infringement notices that are being sent out uh, from the perspective of an ISP. And much like uh, as with carrier grade NAT, uh, it's a complex situation where the ISP is put in the middle and you're expected to act and do all sorts of things. The purpose of this presentation is to observe in the spirit of this conference describe and analyze and see if there are any interesting things, lessons to be learned, or maybe questions uh, that should be asked. Um, I'm Arjan van Hattem and I work at uh, Access for All. I am a uh, systems administrator responsible mostly for the uh, operational abuse handling that goes on on our customer network. Basically that means it's my job to find out if a customer has been infected and if that is the case, uh, take uh, effective action. Access for All is uh, an ISP in the Netherlands, and we've been around for about 20 years or so, and uh, during that time we've been able to gather some information or to get some experience in these matters. Yes. Um, this is more or less what I wanted to spend the next half hour with. Introduction, I think we've just done that. Uh, zoom in on a single copyright infringement notice. See what does it look like, uh, what sort of text it is sent, uh, what sort of information does it contain, how is it built up, who sends it, and what do we do with it. Then we'll just look at some stats, some basic numbers, methods, content right holders, whoever reports these things, and some other uh, things. And then we're going to conclude it. All right, so this is a copyright notice as we receive it. As you can see, it's a rather big hunk of text, uh, which made some lawyer very, very happy that he could, was able to write it. But basically it says that Erdato USA swears on the penalty of perjury that Paramount Pictures Corporation has authorized Audito to act, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Essentially, they're telling you, hey, we're this company that has monitored the internet, and uh, we were hired by a content rights holder, and we found out that one of your users has actually been you know, sharing data that they shouldn't have been. Uh, this is a bad thing, and we please ask you to take action and stop it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. One of the, these complaints, they come into our abuse mailbox with a lot of others, and um, that's how we get them. There's a second part, which is about the, uh, which is, as you can see, an XML uh, blob, which is the machine readable part, which they send, and you can see that it's actually uh, set up quite well. Uh, several sections, you have the uh, case number, you can see the complainant, no, it's Erdato, that's the company that's actually doing the reporting, uh, all sorts of information, service provider, that's us, a timestamp, an IP address, the port, the protocol that's being used, the amount of files, whether they've seen it before or not, and uh, some information about the content. In this case, you can see the title that was being shared was the movie Rango, and it was shared on the Torrent Bay tracker. So this is a very complete piece of information. It's very easy to read, you can parse it, you can put it into a database, you can automate it very easily to send messages to your customers and tell them that, hey, you've been doing very naughty stuff. So this is very, very professional and very useful if you want to do something with it. The system they use is the uh, automated uh, copyright notice system. That's the uh, XML standard that they, uh, they've been using it. 
Uh, it's very professionally uh, developed, uh, initially done by Universal Music Group, NBC Universal and Disney, and then later it was uh, added to by Movie Labs, the University of California and the MPAA. And during that process, <clears throat> they've been had uh, contact with uh, big corporations, uh, ISPs in the US like Comcast, AT&T, uh, but also uh, uh, Sony, which has its own nice history with copyright uh, issues. Um, several interest groups, Bay TSP, which is also another company that uh, sends these kinds of warnings, the RRA and SafeNet. And also there's been input from universities. So this is a widely uh, developed and accepted document that has a lot of input from all sorts of uh, parts from uh, society. Uh, once again, uh, making it very easy to accept that you should use this because everybody's worked on it and it has very, very extensive documentation making it very, for very low barriers in uh, using it. And lastly, the whole thing is signed. Just in case you wanted to be sure that the notice is actually from who they say it is. Um, my colleague Niels earlier today was speaking about the legal issues we've had at Access for All over the years. And uh, during that time, we've had communications with uh, copyright holders or rep representatives of those uh, people. And when we've wanted to communicate with them using PGP and to make sure that we were actually speaking to the correct person, um, we often found that that was an issue. They didn't understand it, it was difficult, uh, not possible, all that sort of stuff. But suddenly, when they're reporting it, and it's useful, and they want to lower the barriers for you to use this information, then you'll find that every single message is PGB signed without any problems. So, next question is, what do we do with it, with these complaints? Well, I very craftily made the next slide to illustrate just what we do with it. Just about this. As an ISP, we strongly believe in the freedom of information. Uh, we don't essentially care uh, what goes on on our network uh, other than if we're hosting it. Um, we're a neutral party. Uh, there's no legal requirement to handle these complaints. Uh, and we're not experts on copyright law. We have no idea if the complaint is valid or not. We can't verify it. So, as of now, we don't do anything with it. Though it should be noted that in many countries uh, there are being uh, implemented three strikes law laws, New Zealand, uh, France, and I think the UK is looking at them. And uh, it's these complaints that we get that uh, form the basis for such a system. All right. Let's look at some basic numbers. Um, we've received about 130,000 notices in the last three years. As you can see, the um, distribution indicates that most of the complaints have come in about the last year. Before that, we actually didn't get all that many. If you count out all the users, which we call a unique source identifier, uh, we get about 30,000 unique users that have shared information and have been detected, which is about 10% of our user base. Um, it's a little bit different, those, those identifiers, they're half. Um, for Usenet, we get the usernames, and for um, torrents and other protocols, we just use the uh, IP address. We actually give out static IP addresses to our customers, so this information is uh, fairly useful because we can just say, well, it's one IP equals one user, and it's not very apt to change except when people move house or they uh, disconnect their lines. So on the whole, we feel that this is a, a rather useful set in that regard. But we should note, uh, I should note, 
uh, this is a subset of information that we receive from parties that we have no real contact with. Uh, it pertains to our user database, uh, which may differ from others in sharing uh, behavior, especially if you start looking worldwide. So uh, everything that we see uh, is from our perspective and is not immediately truth. These are some of the methods that are being used for file sharing. You can see that uh, about half of all the complaints we get are from BitTorrent. The, um, re about 40% Usenet. And the last bit uh, is uh, eDonkey and CAD, which use the same network. You can still see some very oldies but goodies. Uh, GNUtella, Direct Connect, it's a very, very old. Um, but for the most part, it's just those three. Uh, whether those are the most popular file sharing protocols or the most monitored, that's hard to say, of course. This is distribution of the content holders. Um, you can see that it's fair distribution of just about every big name you can see. We've got Paramount, Viacom, HBO, um, Warner Brothers, Microsoft. These are the companies that hire those reporting entities and uh, task them with finding their uh, information. Um, it was a little bit hard to collect this list because the names aren't always uh, reported properly. There's spelling mistakes and uh, different annotations. So I've tried to add them up a little bit. But on the whole, it's not very easy to get a very specific picture. This is a distribution of the complaints we receive for reporting entities. What's interesting here is that you see almost 95% of the entire chart is made up by four blocks. The second and third block, however, are, D are D2 and Vobile, uh, I'm sorry, and BayTSP, um, are the same company that changed names. So in essence, what's going on here is that 95% of all copyright claims that we receive uh, come from three parties, just three. And if you split them up, then you'll find that the Morganelli group focuses exclusively on Usenet, which means that every single Usenet complaint we get is from one company only, and that all the BitTorrent and eDonkey complaints that we get, are, or at least 95 or 90% 90 of them, are from um, two separate companies. So that's a very, very highly focused group, very specialized. Um, some of them are more professional than others. You can have a look. The Morganelli group have uh, been around for quite a while. Uh, they do Usenet indexing, Usenet indexing. They have 4 million combined DCM, DMCA notices sent as of May 2013, as they say. And they advertise with, we monitor the internet 24-7 for your copyrighted works. The interesting part here is that this particular company was founded by the owner of the BIN News Usenet indexing site. Uh, this site was actually charged or uh, sued by the uh, MPAA in 2000, 2005 uh, or six, and they settled in February that year for $15 million. And suddenly after that, the owner, uh, they gave up the site. But they kept their technology for indexing, and they now are using it for uh, detecting uh, copyright infringements. So that's a very interesting case where you see that a person or a group went from one side completely to the other, but still using the same technology. They, on their site, they have a, they have a little uh, wall of fame, as they call it. And they have there the, the, the testimonials of uh, Usenet users saying that, hey, uh, the information uh, was uploaded three minutes ago, but it's already gone. Damn, they're fast. Another party, Ardito slash Bay TSP. Uh, it's a very big company, 25 offices, 500 to 1,000 employees, according to the LinkedIn profile. Uh, they monitor just about everything except Usenet. And their headquarters are actually uh, about an hour's drive from here in uh, Hofdorp, probably right next to Brian uh, headquarters, uh, which is also there. They focus on digital asset protection, customer care and billing, dynamic security, and online media protection. 
and they've been around since 1969. So this is a fairly professional and good setup company that's using, doing this kind of stuff. Then there's also WebSheriff. It's a little bit less impressive. We only have 600 complaints from them. Uh, personally, I feel safer already seeing that very intimidating man pointing at me in a threatening fashion. Uh, if you look at the site, just about half the pages are under construction. It's not very... In, it, it, if you look there and you, if you browse to that site, you wouldn't be impressed. But this is a company that sends out copyright notices and, and claims, hey, we are professional uh, enough, we have the uh, information and experience to tell you that you, this person on your network is sharing content and they shouldn't be. But when you look at their site, it looks as if a three-year-old toddler made it. So that, to me, is a bit dis uh, dis uh, encouraging. Let's look at some user stats. We have 30,000 unique uh, identifiers. We put them in a database, uh, anonymized. We have no interest in actually knowing which of our users are doing what. We just want to see what's going on on our network on the whole. Um, and where you see that in the previous slide, about 40% was Usenet and 50% uh, BitTorrent, uh, the distribution of users is actually much more towards BitTorrent, and it just seems that people in uh, Usenet either share more or maybe some form of reporting difference where multiple files are reported in a uh, report. If you look at the distribution for Usenet, you see that this is the top 300 users. I tried to put them all in, but uh, the chart was just way too slow, uh, small then. Um, here you can see that maybe the top 1%, because it's 10% on this scale, but it's way less on the whole users, are actually responsible for most of the complaints. Same information, uh, same situation for uh, BitTorrent and eDonkey. Um, it's a very, very small subset of users that is actually uh, incurring these claims towards us. This is relevant because, uh, as many of you know, uh, in the Netherlands, the Pirate Bay website is, uh, has been made unavailable. One of the reasons for that is, or one of the um, conclusions that, or judgments that the uh, judge made was, uh, well, the rights of the content holders are, in this case, more important than the rights of all these users, and that's what makes it appropriate to shut it down completely for everyone. But I think that if, if you think that, then part of that consideration should be that if you look at the BitTorrent use alone, uh, if 1% or maybe probably half a percent of the users is actually responsible for incurring those great heavy losses for those companies, then uh, it doesn't seem reasonable to shut down the site for all users, which are not uh, responsible for that loss. Uh, our top user, by the way, it's quite, it's quite scary, the, the, the peak there, um, that's someone that has been tracked for about 18 months. Um, the information, uh, we get daily reports um, from his IP. And they actually, if, if you look at that information from the other side, that's quite a report you have on someone's illegal sharing activities. So uh, at the very least, you should be aware that people are looking, are monitoring, and uh, they're keeping this data. Uh, in some, some cases, even the data is being um, stored uh, preemptively, in the sense that they don't have a customer for the data yet, but uh, as soon as the data uh, customer becomes available, they say, hey, look, three years ago for this IP address, we found that this user has been sharing your content, and, um, well, it's for you to do what you want to do with it. So even if you haven't heard anything today, you might still some other time. This is a... Uh, short look at the BitTorrent notices we get. Uh, I found these interesting because uh, of the red line. Um, as you can see, we, as you know, or may know, uh, starting February 1st, 2012, 
um, we were, as X4 was, had to comply with the, um, with the judge and we had to block access to the Pirate Bay. Uh, many reports have been written since then uh, if the blockade is uh, or not effective. And as you can see here, at the red line is where we started blocking. And based on the reports that we see, not on the actual traffic, this is a flawed picture, based on the information that these entities sent to us, you can see that during that period, there doesn't really seem to be any change at all. Uh, and then later, we get a lot more reports, but that's mostly because they probably upgraded their detection capability. This is a zoomed in picture, so you can see better. It actually, from this picture, it looks as if it's going up. So we block the Pirate Bay and we get more complaints. But uh, if you look at the bigger picture, it doesn't really, it's not really significant. But from this information, at least, the blockade of the Pirate Bay has no effect whatsoever. I've had a look at the trackers. We detected about 134 unique tracker domains. 70% uh, of all notices we get for BitTorrent are sent without tracker information. So either they didn't report it to us or they were using uh, trackerless methods of sharing. Um, interesting point of fact is that there are almost no private or popular trackers on, in our data set. I went uh, to uh, torrentinvites.com, I looked at the reviews for which, which the best tracker with the most information, uh, best uh, pre-times, that sort of stuff. And uh, I took those top 10, top 15 trackers, I, took, uh, I searched through those through our data set and maybe a couple are in there. And when they are, it's maybe one or two complaints. Which is weird, because in the private trackers, where you have to keep a ratio and really share, and people are actually quite serious about it, using seed boxes uh, on colo sites or uh, VPS servers, um, you'd think that there is actually a lot, of, a lot of potential for reporting users. So I don't quite understand why they're not doing that. Possibly because um, private sites, uh, they're usually, uh, maybe they have a different tactic for going after those, because, uh, as in they target the site, not the user. You see a lot of those sites getting raided. So that could be it. Another interesting fact, Highly localized trackers are also monitored. I found trackers that were uh, only available in Romanian and Russian and had a sign-up procedure before you could uh, use it. Dutch tracker only was being checked, also with a sign-up procedure, and a uh, French tracker. So while they're not sharing, looking at the very big sites, they are looking at many small sites, even the ones that are, would normally not attract a lot of attention. I don't know if you can read this. Uh, this is the I made a list of the content that's being shared. Uh, it's mostly movies, television. Uh, you can see things here like uh, Jersey Shore, um, South Park, The Dictator, Madagascar 3, Spartacus. Honestly, I, I doubt the taste of our customer base uh, based on this information. It's a bit scary. This is, this is the information that we, this is the actually sent in, uh, in the XML. They have a different, uh, they, have a, they put in a, a tag called the title. And the title is, uh, I think they probably uh, went through the um, file names and then they reverse engineer them to make a title. It's a bit difficult because the file names, they're not always very clear. So to get a good look at the title is pretty, pretty, pretty hard to make a good database uh, from it. Um, so yeah, it's, this is what they sent to us in that regard. We see very little ebooks, some music, little software, mostly it's TV. Uh, this may have something to do with uh, maybe our customers, they mostly share this sort of information, or perhaps uh, the content rights holders find it more attractive to um, go after this sort of sharing because they think they lose the most money from this particular uh, activity. Another one thing or 
I found odd is that uh, South Park and uh, The Daily Show, which is on here, those are um, series that are freely available, streamed in the Netherlands. So I don't quite understand why people are doing this. Uh, one theory may, may be that people are, have been used to downloading things, and now that there are free alternatives or alternatives, uh, they've simply not they've simply so put, gotten to the routine of downloading things or the barrier for downloading is so low, they can't be bothered to go to a different place. All right. What we see here on this whole information is that essentially an extensive reporting framework is being built. It uses high quality information, it reports using standards, uh, it's easy to process, well documented, it's open information. Uh, the actual document for the XML standard is uh, open source, which is slightly ironic. Um, it's very specialistic business, where rights holders, they just buy services, essentially from three companies that do all the reporting. And they focus mainly on movies, TV, the popular methods of sharing are tracked. And it kind of seems that they're going after long-hanging fruit at the moment. It's not exactly rocket science what they're doing. Some questions I... Uh, well, actually, uh, one other thing is that what's interesting about this is that when you have three companies doing this sort of thing, um, and there, what you could see is that the information we get many, in the last year, we've gotten about three times or four times reports we normally got. It seems that um, together with uh, discussions, at least in Europe and other parts of the world, uh, regarding three strikes laws, as I said, this is what such a three, three strike law system would depend upon. So, um, what I find interesting is that if a country implements a three strikes law, or how many strikes law you want, that they are mostly relying on the services of three external companies based in the US, paid for by obviously the uh, content rights holders, to essentially uh, make law and uh, disconnect people from the internet. Um, that seems to me, well, interesting to put it mildly. Other things, who has access to this data? One of the, one of the companies that actually um, sends out these notices, they say on the website, hey, we keep our data indefinitely. Wow, interesting. Um, who has access to this data? Uh, if Facebook and uh, Google put their backends into uh, the NSA, what does that mean for a content right holder, which is backed by a copyright lobby, which has all sorts of interests and dealings with the government, and who may want to have all sorts of uh, special information? How can such data be enriched? What sort of profile can you build from this? Um, can people find out that I've been sharing a particular nasty set of pornography that I wouldn't want anyone to find out? I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Essentially, that was my talk. Um, thank you very much. Any questions? Hi. Hi. I understand that uh, all the data is based on the notices, not on traffic measured. It's all from notices we received. We, this is not from traffic measurement that we've done. Okay. I found the Usenet part interesting because I would assume they can only see people who have uploaded the data, mm -hmm. not have, who have downloaded data. Yes. So that will mean that probably Usenet is much more larger than BitTorrent. Sorry, how do you, what do you mean? I'm making the assumption that yes. Usenet usage is larger than BitTorrent because you only see the uploads. Uh, well, what you see is that uh, if you look at the users, that because uh, this is this is about uploading essentially, 
But um, if you look at the users, the, uh, there's less Usenet users, but they generate more or more complaints than, uh, so one Usenet user would generate more complaints than one BitTorrent user on average. But if you look at the entire base, it's more people using BitTorrent than Usenet uh, uploading, at least. You also said that uh, South Park and The Daily Show are freely available. Yes. So why would you get copyright notices? Yeah, that's exactly my question. Uh, I think that uh, it's my personal opinion that uh, a lot of the copyright, uh, what you see is that actually, actually there's a, a Norwegian report on music sharing where you see that as soon as that legal alternatives become available, uh, sharing goes down. And I think that a lot of times uh, when legal easy to use alternatives are not available, people get lazy. They want the least amount of clicks to their music and television. And if you put a complicated system in place uh, and uh, you have a very easy file sharing method, which BitTorrent is, then if I have two clicks and I have the daily show, then I'm fine. Um, and then I don't ever have to look anywhere else to get that anymore. So people are, I think people are used to it and are lazy and that's why they stick with something that works. So can you confirm that since the introduction of Spotify with Access for All that you've seen a reduction in music, downloads, uploads? Uh, I've looked at the data and I've tried to look at that, but we get too little uh, notices about music to say something about that. So uh, if we can look at the, there's too many, too few notices on the whole to, to put any sort of analysis uh, that is meaningful on it. All right. Thank you. Hi, I'm an Access for All subscriber as well. Um, <clears throat> you say you do absolutely nothing with those, uh, those requests. Mm -hmm. um, but they can be, uh, be used to, to build a file on you, you said. It's, it's possible that... that uh, so, as a subscriber, I, I would be interested to see if there were any requests uh, coming in from my mm -hmm. IP. Yes. Is it possible to find that out? Yes, you can just uh, send us an email. Uh, yeah. Any sort of information that we have on you yeah. Uh, is, uh, we are required to tell you that and uh, I have no problems with uh, informing our customers when they ask yeah. for that sort of information to tell them. Okay, thank you. Um, hi. Uh, as you don't process these notices, do you have any idea why they are keeping sending them? Um, Yes, I think once because um, they don't know what we do with it. Okay. Uh, to um, if you want to build a legal framework uh, around three strike law or something else, then you have to be able to point to a set of data that says, "Hey, look, look at all the damage that we're taking, and uh, you're not doing anything." But there's such an easy system with an open standard that anyone can use in XML, and it's great. That should be very easy to just put there. And you already have the data. We've been sending it to you for years. All you have to do is write a simple script, and it's fine. So I think they are sending it as part of a much larger operation to you know, put forward their agenda to uh, combat file sharing. So even if you don't do anything with it now, maybe in a year or two, the Netherlands will have a three strikes law. And then we'll, be, we'll have to do something with it. All right. If there's any more questions, we can take them now. Uh, otherwise, uh, another round of applause for our speaker. <laughs>